Hey guys, so a lot of you have always reached out to me after reading my articles or watching my videos asking me how can we build good machine learning projects or just get a job in machine learning and this is a lot, very true for like students and beginners so this is going to be video one in a series where I will tell you how we, how you should how you can build with just one machine learning project to get an entry level job in ML. If you're more intermediate or advanced I will be making different videos on how you can integrate these techniques to uh, become more advanced or intermediate in other videos. So make sure you're subscribed uh, to uh, keep track of that. But for now, this video will focus more on towards the beginners. How do you get the entry level job? So first, and this is the biggest misconception I see a lot of uh, tech YouTubers, etc., will talk about how you, get, you need the five machine learning projects you need to have or whatever. In reality, you only need one. And I think a lot of this misconception comes from a lot of what machine learning is and what people think machine sh learning should look like. It's true that having a diverse area of exp experience in ML is very important. And you know, a lot of the reason that I've been able to be successful is because I've worked on many projects, etc. But uh, that, that comes with time and that comes with experience. There's no sense in rushing that with your ML projects. Your ML projects themselves should just be focused on their cell, uh, should work to integrate multiple steps in, of your pipeline. You have the validation, the pre-processing, the model training, then your model validation, and finally your deployment. And I think that's, again, something that a lot of people get wrong about ML. Too many beginner ML people try to prove their ML skills by getting into Kaggle and you know using one of their data sets to be like okay I trained this model and I trained some other model I did ha model hyped up parameter tuning etc all of that is important and you will you will always have cases in uh, your ML journeys where you have where you're given models where you're given clean data and you're given labels etc but what Kaggle misses and what a lot of like what Kaggle doesn't give you and what a lot of things will give you is you you have to actually in a lot of the real world you have to work on first validating your data, pre-processing it, and also how do you m validate your models. So too many people focus on the actual model training itself and miss out both the steps before, which is the data cleaning and validation, and the steps after, which is how do you know that this is the best model? How do you compare different models? What kind of metrics are you using? Or the deployment. And I think a lot of this comes from the fact that people don't understand the mathematical concepts like ROC or if you're using binary classification or jacquard or MSE or you know any regression what are the difference between these multiple regression statistics where do you use one i've had to work in cases where i we invented our own regression statistics as well so how do you do that and a lot of this you will uh, is missed if you're just doing a kaggle or you're just going to google's or facebook's github page loading their models and trying to do, build an image classifier based on that you know you're missing a lot of the steps so here is how we will do this and we can break this down into uh, three steps and you know don't get this point wrong I'm not saying that machine learning models are not important they are obviously very important but I think what is missed often is that in a lot of your machine learning journeys you will have to build your data sets or you will have to work with incomplete or you you will just be given a lot of raw data and you'll have to try extracting the uh, in meaningful uh, information out of it in such a case often you, even picking your right, picking the model comes from a lot of the cues you read from your EDA, etc. And that's not something a Kaggle can teach you because Kaggle, Kaggle, etc. have already given done all these steps for you. So what we're going to do is we are going to, so we can break this down into different steps. Say there are there are multiple fields you might be interested in. So say there are like there's computer vision, there's natural language processing, and then there is statistical analysis. And obviously you can do multiple of these. I've, I've worked in all three. I primarily work as a statistical analyst, but I've also done a lot of computer vision research. If you look at my deep fake detection playlist, a little bit of NLP here and there, that's not exactly my strong suit, but you know, you can say that the, uh, in terms of supervised learning or whatever, you might have these three categories. You might have things like association learning, uh, you know, uh, in un unsupervised so these are the, these are these four are pretty good for just beginner level 
projects you and as you get more advanced obviously you'll start combining things you'll combine a reinforcement learning optimizer with a uh, deep learning based uh, graph neural network that's uh, been done by google a lot or for example i i have personally worked in cases where we combine bayesian networks with lstms because we use the bayesian networks to calculate a whole bunch of different possibilities and use lstms to forecast each of them individually so you can always combine mix and match but generally you know a lot of this you can learn on the job but these general uh, domains will give you a will give you a good first starting project remember everything hap at its own time next is so how do you actually start building this project and I'd say start using real world data. Don't use one of the uh, already prefurbished data sets online. Those are very good if you're practicing something. Say like if you're practicing your data cleaning techniques, then you might use something like a, a Kaggle data set and you start dropping out uh, random information and try to impute it to evaluate different imputation protocols. That's, that's cool there, but in our case, we're building an end-to-end -end ML model. We're not just focusing on model training. So we'll, we'll use real world data and that will also get you equipped to deal with a lot of the challenges that comes with using real world data, like incomplete data, uh, mess, uh, you know, I've worked with, when I was working with Johns Hopkins, our data set was so noisy. There was so much external noise and there was so much incompleteness in that data. How do you handle that? All of that comes in to play when you use real world data. So let's say you're focusing on, on NLP. One cool thing would be take random products and try to build sentiment analysis of them but instead of building you know you can scrape amazon you can scrape t twitter amazon and twitter are two like so you you will actually build the scraping protocols yourself so that'll give you a lot of software engineering experience and you combine that amazon and soft uh, twitter reviews then you do your feature extraction from them and you start thinking okay what would be an important feature what would not be an important feature you have to start thinking of these factors yourself instead of you know you you might just copy some uh, code online and then you start playing around with it uh, seeing what does the sentiment analysis give me here and there and you and once you've done that you know if you were building a binary classification model to say okay is this a positive negative uh, positive which is being one or negative negative one kind of a uh, review and how many of these do i have you might you know you train your classifiers then you test out multiple binary statistics, you know, F1, your F1 score, your, uh, if, uh, to check if you're, if you have a lot of imbalanced classification, because remember, if you're dealing with real world reviews, somebody who's pissed off with the product is more likely to leave the, a bad review than a good review, uh, than somebody happy with the product. So you might have a case of imbalanced classification or, you know, just a case where, uh, the, data distribution doesn't really model real world analysis and you have to keep these in mind and that's again why real world data becomes so important so you want to use multiple different uh, metrics not just your true accuracy or if you were a statistical analyst like me you're a bit, you're being inspired by me go to the near neighbor coffee shop or whatever and ask them hey can i can i get your data and once you get their data you start getting the transaction data you load onto an excel sheet or whatever then you have to start thinking how do i what features do i actually want to take from this data what am i trying to track and that will give you so much practice for actually handling noisy data to try and extract even you know meaningful features out of this remember garbage in garbage out so if you have bad features then no matter how good your model is it's not going to give you valuable results so you, you've gone to your coffee shop and you've tested your uh, your you 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 play around with the different you know, meaningful features. This is what's important. This might not be important or you, uh, and then you might start doing some data engineering, a uh, feature gathering, like, you, you know, different kinds of pastries can probably be grouped together into one b major group. And, you know, same for like different kinds of meat sandwiches. My, you might decide that all ham sandwiches are one group and you do some kind of uh, data, uh, you know, clustering to figure out what kind of feature groups you want. All of these are very important steps in your IRL that, Kaggle will often not expose you to. So you do all of these, you build your data sets and then you like, okay, based on the, my customer behavior, based on my customer specifications, what can I expect? Uh, how, how can I expect a return customer? And you might start building uh, y your memberships based on that, etc. This is very similar to the project I did with ICICI Bank where we were just evaluating 
their customer behavior online based on a lot of metrics. And based on that customer behavior, we're trying to predict, is this customer going to be a good customer to call up and try to sell a loan to? And what can we, what kind of va uh, lifetime value can we expect from this guy? You know, so you see how this project is a very simplified version of the ICICI bank project, but it, it still has a lot of steps that's being missed in the Kaggle data set. If you just took the Kaggle data set, you have to, you have to make sure that your machine learning model is state of the art, you're beating Google, et cetera and doing a lot of things. And if you're capable of doing that, then you probably don't need to watch this video. But if in the other, in the case, in most cases, you're better off trying to work on multiple. And once you have all of these models, et cetera, ready, now you might want to look into deploying them over the cloud because cloud computing is becoming so big and most of your ML models will handle the cloud-based. And obviously this cloud-based is actually going to be your step for the intermediate or advanced learner. So, if you want to take it to the next level, make sure you're subscribed and you like this video if you've enjoyed the content so far to promote this. But uh, the cloud will actually help you when you want to make this project more complex, more advanced, when you want to add in more steps. So you deploy this model to the cloud so that, you know, I can just give you, the coffee shop can just upload their data set there and it'll do all the analysis for them automatically. So, you know, hopefully you see we have a lot of step. We're doing a lot of things that Kaggle projects don't normally teach you. Normally, Kaggle projects you'll read them. They'll be like M as uh, the handwritten data set for computer vision or just Titanic or whatever, and they're just going to be like, okay, you did this, and every every third guy and their grandmother has this on their resume as a machine learning project. And I think that gives you a very wrong understanding of what ML actually looks like in practice. It's really closer to an art than a science and a practice because you're testing out a lot of things. You're experimenting here and there, you're looking at what your input is and you're trying to derive an output, a reasonable model and output out of that. And that's not something that a lot of people normally think of. And once you do build a project that handles all this end-to-end -end from actually collecting raw data, turning it into information, so that there's your data validation and pre-processing steps coming in. You know, maybe you have some incompleteness in your data and you're actually testing different imputation policies video on that, check it out to see what impu imputation policy works best. Then you're taking that and you're training, uh, you know, even if your model here is simple, you see how many other steps we've tacked on, there's so much you can talk about. And this will also help you figure out where you're interested in machine learning, what uh, kinds of areas interest you. So you, there's a lot of benefits to doing it this way. And I would recommend if you're trying to get a job in machine learning, this is the way forward. If you like this video, make sure you hit, you've hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. Uh, all the link, social media links where you can re reach out to me or check out my other content are in the description below. Do check them out. If you're interested in talking to me, uh, you know, discussing more steps like a lot of people do, my Instagram is a great way to reach out to me. You know, we can set up a call or whatever. Uh, my link, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn for more uh, to keep track of all of my content. Uh, make sure you're subscribed again. And uh, if you're preparing for your coding and technical interviews or a programming challenge, check out my link coding interviews made simple. Obviously, uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Uh, bye. Have a good one.